Many people, particularly in business, see the Sustainable Development Goals as an incremental agenda. Let's do more of what we're doing and we'll get by 2030 to where we need to be. They're not an incremental agenda. They're basically about exponential change. Change is nice to have, but we actually got to jump into that breakthrough. And I think people are increasingly minded to at least give it a go. I'm often asked, uh, over decades, are you a pessimist, are you an optimist, what the hell are you? And my answer is, generally, I was born an optimist. I can see the problems, I can see the challenges, and they are humongous. But I'm an optimist at the moment because um, I think our species tends to do um, its most interesting innovation, jump to very different spaces when it's backed into a corner. There are very clear signs that elements of the old order that we've grown up in are breaking down. I think we're entering into a U-bend of history in the sense that an old order is coming apart and we're going down, whether we like it or not. We'll bump along for a period of maybe 10, 15 years. And when we come out, we're going to come out very, very uh, rapidly. So that process is going to be exponential. And the question is, can we get from that almost inevitable trajectory as we move towards 9 to 10 billion people around the world to a very different set of trajectories, which, which take us to a, a better future? And I believe we can. And that, that, in shorthand, is what we call breakthrough. When we think about breakthrough, one way of framing it is to think about mindsets, technologies and business models. And if I think about the mindset component, I often think back to the Second World War when the um, US Navy uh, Marine Corps in, in the Pacific campaign would talk about impossible takes a little longer. Um, that sort of mindset is exactly what we're seeing in some of these exponential change agents and innovators and so on. They think about a future which is actually startlingly exciting, an abundant future rather than the constrained future that we've tended to think about in the sustainability field. They may be deluded, but I think that ambition, that level of appetite for change is exactly what we need. There are a bunch of different technologies that are coming through now which offer a great deal of potential to address some of the critical social and environmental challenges, they're not without consequences. They will all have unintended effects. We've got to think those through. But those technologies almost sit in the laboratory until somebody comes up with a way of wrapping them around with the process of value creation, what is called a business model. So that's why I think we need to think about mindsets. We need to uh, get much more actively involved in the world of uh, evolving technology. And then we've got to think about how that we take these new technologies and create the business models that will shift the economy on its um, foundations. One characteristic of the way in which business has responded to this whole societal agenda is by appointing lots and lots of people to do corporate social responsibility, corporate citizenship, shared value, play these sorts of roles, uh, serve these sorts of needs. And that's tremendous, but uh, what you see most of these people doing is preparing a business case for action. Does this make sort of commercial sense in the current system or not? And if it doesn't, then we won't do it, and if it does, then uh, we will. What we see is a shift, and, and it doesn't mean that people won't continue to do uh, the business case, but increasingly there's an interest in business models. How do you create these new forms uh, of value in a way that markets uh, will uh, reward you for? Business leaders for the last 20 or 30 years have been told that they really need to pay more attention to environment and then sustainable development and all the rest of it. And initially they engaged activists, campaigners, non-governmental organizations, Fifteen years ago they started to sort of reach out to social entrepreneurs, people who are trying to create new forms of social and environmental uh, value. And now I think what they're just beginning to recognise is that all of that's great to have, but it's not sufficient for what we need to do. And I think that's a key part of why there is this interest in reaching out to um, people like the XPRIZE Foundation, the Singularity University, people who are trying to rethink our challenges and actually the bigger the problem the happier these people are because the bigger the opportunity they see. <laughs>